Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about APIs, which stands for Application Programming Interface. You, you probably asking yourself what an API is. An API is, is nothing more than a way for you to communicate with a server, right? It's, an, it's a way for you to communicate with the server. Now, in an API, you can make certain types of requests. You want to update something, you want to get some data, or you want to delete something. It's it's really up to it's really up to you so what we have here is we're going to try and build something like this but we're going to make it look maybe we're going to make it look pretty maybe but it's going to be more visually better than what you see here so we're just going to create sort of like a background here and here we're going to have an input field for like a search bar and we're going to have a button here so when we click on there we want to render some data we want to search for a certain song like apparently by j cole right we want to search apparently and we want to get some data back based on that name right so we want to get maybe the name of the artist or something like that so that's the type of api that we're going to try to consume so what happens is certain websites give you certain apis right they give you an api and they tell you what it does and how to use it right so that's the type of api we're going to be using in this tutorial uh, hopefully that wasn't too difficult to understand. We're going to get into more about this on the next video, but really this is just an introduction just to kind of get you to understand what an API is. So really an API is nothing more than just a way for you to communicate with the server. So you have your machine here and you have a server somewhere, whether it's in the United States or whatever. It's really a way for you to communicate with that. Now you can't just communicate with the server. Some of the APIs you need to have some sort of key that allows you to get that data. So they're going to provide that key to you. They might sell that, sell that key to you or you might get it for free. It's really up to them how they play, how they want to do things. Or you might not even need a key. You just uh, use a certain URL that they provide and boom, you have all that data. So it's really up to them how they want to do things. Right. So the first thing you're going to need to do is open up your browser and search for this music API. And the first thing you're going to see is this link, top eight free music APIs updated for 2022. Now you're going to click on that link and it's going to take you to this website. Now this is Rapid API. It usually has a lot of free APIs to use. I'm not sure if it has some of the paid APIs, but yeah, some of the APIs you have to pay for, some of them are free. And you're going to go down and you're going to click on this Shazam API. That's, that's the one we're going to work on. If you want to, you can try all of these out, but this is the one that we're going to be focusing on for this. Now it's going to take me straight to the Shazam API documentation. Now the documentation is going to tell you how to use that API. It's going to tell you what code to literally what code to write. So you don't even need to, sometimes you don't even need to, to write any of the code yourself. Some of them just provide the API link and you're going to have to know how to do the whole implementation, but some of them, they provide the code for you, which is great. And it also provides, some of them are going to sell these API keys. You're going to have to pay for them. Now, without this, you won't be able to connect to the API. Some of them don't have API keys. Some of them are just the link. Just searching for this, you're going to get all of the data like that. And some of them, you will need to have some, some sort of authentication to be able to connect to that API. Uh, as you can see here, this is a very great uh, platform to test some APIs because what happens is you can test it, you can test it right here without having to use um, other third-party applications like um, Postman or Insomnia. So you can just test it out here, but we're not going to do that. What I want us to look at is this code right here. Now this code is, this is how to implement this API. This is how to use this API. So this is what they provide, this link. And the never mind that. I want you to focus on this link and these things, this API, this key string here. and this host string here now these are very important this this is the these are the three types of data that you're going to receive from that from an ap from someone who provides or some website that provides an api um, and you're going to have to learn to implement this on your own but this is the axios implementation which is another way to implement apis in javascript but we're not we're not going to be doing that we're going to be doing the fetch api which is a lot easier and also, I haven't done Axios, so I don't know it, but I've heard about it. I've been using Fetch, Fetch APIs for a while now. And here, this is very simple. As you can see, this is just a simple object. And the object has 
property called method. Now, if you've been coding for a while and if you've done some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, if you've done HTML and you've worked with forms a lot, you're going to see, you, you remember, you probably remember an attribute called get, um, method. Now, the method allows you to specify whether you're going to be making a get or post request. And we, we are just trying to get the data here. We're not trying to alter that data. We're just trying to get that data. So we're going to have to type here, get. And then as the second one, the headers, we're just going to specify whatever they give us here. So in the headers, we should specify the the X rapid API key, whatever they decide to call it in that in, in the API that you are trying to consume. And the value here, you're going to pass in that value as the as the value in this object. So this is also an object within this options object. And this is the host. You're going to paste the same thing. Now here, you're going to use the fetch API, the fetch method or function, I should say. Now the fetch function, you pass in two parameters. One parameter is the, the actual link, the API link that they provide for you, the API endpoint, which the right word for it is the API endpoint. And the second argument is going to be your implementation. Or sorry, not your implementation, but the, the object. So if you want to specify whether you want to make a get request and you want to specify your headers, they're all going to go in here. So you're going to create an object, an actual object. And then this is this whole thing is asynchronous. So which means that it literally, it takes some time to, to finish processing. And if you actually write some code down here without, without this, without this whole thing, that code is going to execute first without waiting for this fetch to finish. So now if you don't understand all, all the stuff that I'm telling you right now, you don't have to, I'm just going to, I'm going to write down the implementation and we are going to understand this whole thing together. Now, never mind everything here. No, you don't really need to understand all of this. You just have to copy this and paste it on your code and it's going to work. But you will need to understand the implementation of the fetch API, right? You don't need to understand what these keys are. Just copy and paste them as they tell you how to do it. It's as simple as that. But it's very important to understand so that when you run into an issue, you know how to solve it. And also you know how to use that API. Right, so as you can see here, you can specify what language you're working on and what type of implementation of the API you're going to be working on. So as you can see, we're going to be working on the JavaScript. You can, you can use jQuery. You can use the Fetch API. You can use the XML HTTP request. You can use Axios if you want. But we're going to be using the Fetch API, which is a lot simpler. And yeah. So the next thing we're going to have to do is create a project. Now we're going to do this last. So the first thing I want to do is just handle the user interface of our website. So I'm just going to... Sorry, you have to see that. And I'm going to click on websites. Now, it doesn't matter where you decide to create your project. You can create it everywhere. You can create it anywhere. You can create it here if you want. I'm just going to open a folder called websites, which is where I store most of the websites that I work on. Some of them, actually. Now I'm going to create a folder. This folder, I'm going to give it a name of, um, I'm just going to say tutorial fetch API. You can name it anything you want. Sorry. Now in here, we're going to create a file index.html. There we go. Now, I also would like to create a, a JavaScript file. I'm just going to call it app.javascript or app.js. And I'll create another one style.css maybe we're not going to use it now i also want to specify that you have to or i want to remind you guys that you have to have a bit of uh experience with html css and javascript before you dive into this tutorial you need to you need a bit, a bit of understanding you don't need to be an expert you just need to understand how it works so we're going to open this with visual studio right so i've opened up my visual studio and kind of got okay i was thinking of using bootstrap but i'm not going to because I, no, I don't want to just, I don't want to confuse anyone. So what I'm gonna do is just manually create a navigation navigation link. And you know what? I'm not gonna do the navigation links because they're not important in this tutorial. The important part is a form. So I'm just going to create a form. And what I'm gonna do is 
first thing we're going to need to have is a search bar. And the second thing we're going to need to have is a button. So I'm just going to create two divs. We're going to store the button and we're going to store the search bar here, text field. So again, to explain this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a search bar, something like this, but different. We're going to create something like this. And what we're going to do is try to search for a certain song a song name and we're going to see what information we get according to that name because that's what the api we're trying to consume does it allows us to do that so going back to the browser and going here i'm just gonna um i'm just gonna copy this I'm gonna copy that and i'll paste it here we're probably not going to get something here because obviously we need some authentication for this as you can see we say we get message invalid api key so we need all of this information in order to access the data right we need this key we need the host so what are we going to do we're going to click we're going to copy all of this data i mean that code and i'm just going to open the dev tools and okay let's open the dev tools of our particular website i want to show you how you can open up your website I mean, you probably already know, but let's say someone who doesn't who doesn't know that is watching this video. But we're gonna click open with, and we're gonna choose our preferred browser. We're gonna go to Google, and now we get our little website here. We so far we only get this copyrights reserved thing because for obvious reasons we don't have any other code here. We don't have any other content. We only have the footer. And what's going on here is that we have the copyrights reserved, and we have this little icon here, this little C icon, and we have some two pipe symbols. And then after that, we get a date. We have a date, uh, a dynamic, no, not really dynamic, but it's rendered by using JavaScript. So essentially why I did that was because I don't want to you to keep updating 2022 for every year. So next year, I would have to go back to this website and say 2023. And for the following year, I'd have to go back to the website and say 2024. So we don't want to do that. We want to randomly, we want to generate that automatically using document.write, new date, get full year. Hopefully that was simple, but you don't really need to understand that. We're not focusing on that. Going back to this, we want to work. We want to put some content above this footer, right? Here. Now you're not going to see anything because we haven't added anything. We haven't added a search bar. We haven't added a button. We've just created a div, some something like a container, right? Now we're going to click. We're going to right click and go to inspection. We're going to go to console. And I'm just going to expand this a little bit because it's too small at the moment and i'm going to paste this code here and i'm going to hit enter if you guys are already did or if you guys didn't know this you can write some javascript code on your console so let me just remove this and show you for example we can say console.log two plus two and we're going to get an output of four now when you are working on the console on the console already you don't need to type console.log you can just say two plus two you can write any expression it's going to give you the output now this is kind of redundant if you're saying console.log 2 plus 2 inside the console. So when you're typing hello world, you don't need to do this. Hello world. You don't need to do this. Just type, just put it around strings and just type hello world. Like that, you're going to get your output. Or you can say, let's see if this is going to work. You're probably going to get an error because you're now typing the code and like it's not around strings or something like that. Just hit enter and you're going to get an error because that's not valid JavaScript code, right? So simple enough. I'm just going to clear out this editor. I mean, this console, and I'm going to paste that code here. Now, what you see is you get this promise and a couple of seconds later, you get some data, right? Now, this is a result of a search, a ready-made search. Now, as you can see here, I want you to focus on this. Term is equal to kiss the rain. Now, I want to think of this uh, percentage 20 as a space think of it as a space so kiss the rain is the name of the, the, the song that that person or the thing or the default search is what i'm trying to say so it could have been something else think of applying pressure by j cole so you would say apply applying and then you would say dollars i mean percentage sign 20 and then after that you would say pressure right Let's just test that out. I'm going to paste this code here. I'm going to remove all of this. Uh, and I will say applying pressure. 
Now hit enter and we're gonna get a couple of results back. It's going to look for almost all the songs that has the same title, right? It's going to show you those songs. Now, as you can see, you see here, we get some JSON data, artists, hits, and at number one, okay. Don't know who this is. Let me just click open that. The name of the song is Appli Applying Pressure. I want, you to, I want you to see the artist's names. That's what I'm looking for here. Now, there's a lot of stuff here to look at, and that's what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial. Now, click open on, on tracks. I want, I want to see if I can get the name of the artist. Yeah, as you can see here, we get layout five, type music, key, whatever this is. And the title is Applying Pressure and subtitle is the name of the artist, J. Cole. So you can think of any song, really. It's going to give you that song's name. It's going to just give you some data according to that name of that song. It's not only J. Cole here. As you can see, there's more songs here. One, two, three, four. There's four songs here. And uh, another person is Snoop Dogg on the second index, which is like the third the third um, position, is... I'm just going to open this. Yeah, I don't see anything here. Anyway, yeah, you get the idea. Now, I'll change this to another song. I'm going to change it to... Uh, what other song? The Art of Peer Pressure. Peer, okay, sorry. The Art of Peer Pressure. And it's going to give me some results. Now it's going to wait for a while and then it's going to give me that result. It's not really waiting, it's trying to get that data. We'll talk more about that later on. I'm going to open this tracks, go to hits, and on hits, I will just open this up and I'll see Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is pretty much one of the only people who did a song named um, The Art of Peer Pressure. Or maybe, I, maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't know anyone else who's done a song like that. As you can see from this data, you don't see anyone else. Or at least this is the only known one, right? So using that code, we can get any, 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 really any music that we want to, or we can get information about any music that we want to search for, right? So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go to my app.js and I'm going to paste that code here. Now we're going to do something later on with that code. I just want to focus on this in this uh, little tutorial. I'm going to create an input. So I've typed text and I'm going to create a placeholder. And the placeholder can be searching or search for music. And here we're going to create a button. And this button can be search. I'm going to collapse this console. I'm going to click OK. And as you can see here, we get search for music and we get our button here, right? I also want to have a label. Okay, 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 okay. The label can be inside here. Uh, I'll just say search for music. I know this is redundant because we already have a placeholder, but why not? So yeah, hopefully that wasn't too difficult to understand. And the next thing we're gonna need to do I'm going to give this button an ID of search. And I'll give this also an ID of search input. Right? Now, I'm not going to focus on styling here. If you want to style it, you can style it the way you want to. But I am really, I really want to focus on just working with that API. We're going to deal with the styling later on. Now, I want to show you the results when I paste the code on my on my um, on my JavaScript, now I want you to guess what's gonna happen here. It's gonna inspect. I want you to guess what's gonna happen. Will I get any results here? And why won't I get any results? Okay, let me just comment all this code out. And I'm just gonna say console dot log. Hello. Now, why am I not gonna get a result here? Why am I not getting any results here? For obvious reasons, we have to include that that uh, JavaScript tag down here. I'm just gonna say script and I'll say source. I'll say app.js. 
like that. Now we get that hello on our down on our console. Now we can also include this on the head section if we want, like that. And we will get the same results. But sometimes you're not gonna get this. You're not gonna get any any output by doing that. So what you need to do is you need to type defer right before the source, right? Hopefully that was that wasn't too difficult to understand. I'm going to collapse. Okay, I'm not gonna collapse that. I'm going to delete that hello statement here. And what I'm gonna do is show you, I'm just going to uncomment this code and I will run this code. Now we'll have to wait for a while for that to, to pop up because as I told you, it's getting that data from somewhere. Remember, we're using an API here. We're getting data from a certain endpoint, right? So let's click open this. We get our tracks. Remember what we're searching for by default, we're searching for Kiss the Rain. So when we click on tracks, we're gonna get a couple of hits from different artists. Now the first artist is, hopefully we're gonna get this subject. It's Bill, it's Billy Myers. I'm sorry if he's your favorite artist and I'm pronouncing it wrong. Now we're gonna go to the second one and we get Hiruma. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. If that, that has to be Japanese, it has to be. And here, I don't know, I don't know who this person is, but now instead of being the name of the song, it's that person's name. And I have no idea why the subtitle, why uh, the person's name is, the property of the person's name is subtitle. I don't know, maybe I have no knowledge on things or on musical things that much, but yeah. As you can see, we're getting our data the way that we are expecting to get that data. Now, on to this, I want to explain this a little more. Now, remember I said, or did I? No, I didn't. Okay, so the, the important part here is this fetch uh, function, right? So essentially what's going on here, I'm just gonna uncomment this code here. I mean, I'm just gonna comment that code here. So essentially what I'm doing here is writing a fetch and it takes in two arguments. As you can see here, the first argument is the API endpoint. So I'm just gonna type that down, endpoint. Oh, yeah. First argument is the endpoint and the second argument is the object. Hopefully that wasn't difficult to understand. And that's what we're doing here. If you've already, if you haven't already noticed, that's what we're doing there. We're specifying the endpoint and we're specifying the object here, that object that includes a method and your headers. Right, so I'm just going to remove this. This was just for illustration purposes or for, ex for example. Now what I'm gonna do is uncomment this code here. And to make things a little more simple, I'm just going to create a const variable Actually, it's going to be a let variable because maybe we might have to change it. Maybe we'll see, but I I suspect that we might have to change it. So um, what I'm going to do is remove this whole endpoint here. I'm going to cut this whole endpoint, and I'm going to call this. I'm going to store it in an endpoint variable. I'll paste this code here, and here I'm just going to have. To, I'm just going to pass in the endpoint variable. So now you can see, let me just comment this code here. Now you can see that really what's going on here is very simple. We're just using this fetch function. And as the first argument, we're passing in the endpoint. And as the second argument, we're passing in the object, right? If we wanted to, we could have done this. We could have done this and then written all of this code here, directly here. But we didn't do that. We've created a separate object and we have passed in the name of that object. Right, simple enough. And uh, and uh, the next thing we're gonna do is just trying to just kind of test if this whole thing is working. Yeah, it's still working the same, right? Now I will delete this. I will delete this whole thing, and we'll see what's gonna happen. And nothing happens because we have fetched that data, but we haven't done anything with that, right? So we need to do something with that data, right? Now I'm going to uncomment the first line. And what you see here is a then kind of uh, function. If you can call it that, it's a then function. Now what's going on here is this takes some time. It's asynchronous. It takes some time to finish. And the, the next code that 
that, uh, that, that is written. Remember, JavaScript runs code from top to bottom, right? But here what's going on is it's running this function and this function is taking time, but you don't have to wait for that function to finish. Or this code down here, I'm just going to type console.log. Uh, um, output, just going to say output. This statement here does not need to wait for this to finish in order to, to execute, right? But we have seen in the previous lessons of JavaScript that you have worked on or somewhere, or if you've, been coding, if you've been coding JavaScript for a while, you know that every statement will have to wait for the other one to finish in order for it to execute. But in this instance, that's not what's happening here. When you're creating a fetch function, you have to wait you, it, it, it takes some time to execute and the other ones don't have to wait for that to finish, right? So let me kind of demo that. Uh, let me uncomment both of this. And we will run this. And as you can see, immediately we get output and then later on we get that, uh, that, that whole thing, right? That whole data because it's not waiting for that to finish. So I'm just going to comment these two codes out, these two lines of code out. And I'm going to explain what's going on here. We're getting the response. We're fetching that data and it's taking some time and we're getting that response and we're turning it to JSON. Okay, before I explain that, I'm just going to run this response. I want to show you what's going to happen here. So it's going to get the response and we're going to get this response in, a, in kind of a different way than we expect. I'm not really sure what this type of format is, so we're going to check it out. We're going to say type off. We're going to check what kind of data type that is. It's an object, but it's a different type of object. It's not a JSON. It's not one we can work with easily the way that we're used to. But yeah, as you can see, it's an object. You can really use it. You can really use this the, the right way. As you can see, we get type cores and we get URL, some URL that takes us somewhere else. So really this is not ideal, right? What we wanna do is create another then function. Now, you must, you must want to know what this then is. What you're doing here is kind of executing code that should run after this whole thing finishes. Remember, if we write that code here outside of this fetch function, it will execute first before this could finish, right? So what we're doing here, we're running that code after, sorry, flipping hell. If we specify that code here, it's going to execute that first before this fetch finishes, right? We don't wanna do that. We wanna do it. We wanna run it after this. So, right, so as I've said, this fetch will take some time and then this then will run the response after this whole thing executes, right? So it takes in a callback function and the parameter in that callback function is a response. So we can you can name this anything you want, but I'm just gonna call it response. And it's an error, it's an error function. And after the whole thing executes, we're gonna console log that response we get, right? I'm going to remove these two lines here and I'm going to type it manually. Now here, we're getting that weird object, right? Now here, what I want to do is, or here, we want to change that to JSON. So we want to say response.json. So now we're converting that response to JSON, just like that. And then here, that response is going to be stored as the parameter of this second then object. So it's going to be then function, sorry. We're going to call this one data. And we're just going to console log that data out right simple enough now when we're dealing with this type of stuff we need to catch our errors because let's uh, i want to show you what's going to happen if we don't do that yeah as you can see here we get uncaught in promise type error failed to fetch add whatever so we need to catch that error i'm going to call this err and it's an error function, console.log. We're gonna console.log that error out if we have one, right? Now, another thing to note is, if your person likes to use semicolons at the end, like me, 
you have to be careful that when you're working with asynchronous uh, programming or asynchronous function, make sure that if you're still going to use a then or dot then, then you shouldn't add a comma, I mean a semicolon at the end. Don't do that. Don't add semicolons at the end because this then, this is a method chain. This is some, some sort of method chain here. This is the same as this. This is some chaining, a long chaining. But if we, if, we, if we have written this code like that, if we had written this code like that, it would be a bit confusing, right? So that's why we write it out in like this in different lines, right? So now it's a lot easier to understand. So if you add a semicolon, this won't work. Now, now we're going to check the response. And we've did this a couple of times. So. So now let's run this again. And it's going to take a while and it's going to give us our response. So now everything is working fine. And you may have already guessed that we have to write all of our code inside this second function here. I'm going to open it like that. And for so long, I'm just going to console, console log that data. I'm going to click refresh and we should be getting that data back. Now, I want to understand what is going on here. How do we work with this data? Is it like a single object? We get like an object bag and we get artists and we get an array for hits, array of objects. We need to understand how this object works and then we need to render the type, the only the type of data that we want to render. So do we want to work with hits, artists, or do we want to focus on just printing out the artist name or whatever we want to do? So the first thing I'm going to do is just i just want to print out the name of the artist i don't want to focus a lot on the other types of uh, data that we have in this object right so but before i do all of that i want to search for the song here instead of in the url right i want to search for the song here like if i want to search for applying pressure we should get some data down here right Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go to my index.html and I'm going to grab the input ID. So I'm going to grab this. And here we're going to go up there. I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call this input. We want to say document.getElementById. And in here, we're just going to paste the ID of that certain input. So now we we're getting that input, but we want to get the value of that input, right? So what we want to do here, so what I like to do is instead of using that, we're going to use back ticks because I want to, there's something I want to do. Term kiss the rain, right? So this would be the name of the song. So I'm going to replace that with input, right? So this is what I want to do. input but now we're not going to get the value we want we're not getting that value we're just getting the whole input object so we're going to get an error here when we try to search for a song we're going to get an error you know not an error we just don't get anything we're not getting an error we're not getting anything because it does not know what that is it's trying to search for whatever we put in there so instead of doing that we say input dot value to get the value of that input. Syntax error, unexpected, end of JSON input. Okay, never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing we need to do is we need to trigger that in case, like when we click on this search button. We don't just want to do that. We don't just want to uh, search out of nowhere because what is gonna, what's going to happen is it's going to get this value, but this value is nothing, right? There's nothing in here. So, it doesn't understand what you mean by input dot value. It doesn't understand what you mean by giving it a null value, right? So what we're gonna do is, mm, okay, how am I gonna do this? So what am I? So what I'm gonna do is say document dot get element by ID. We're gonna get the button name. Uh, the name of the button was search. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab it by the search ID. And here we're going to say add event listener. So we're going to add an event listener. 
and it's going to be a tight click because we want to we want that we want that to happen when we click on that button and we'll have this e parameter here and we're going to say e dot prevent default to in order to prevent that from refreshing from auto refreshing and i'm going to copy this I'm going to cut that and i'm going to paste it in here right right so now we're ready to go and now i'm going to search for applying pressure nice click on search it's going to take a while and it should return our tracks to us so as you can see we get all our results back um it's going to open on hits and there we get j cole as the subtitle so we want to get that subtitle and we want to print out all the artists from each of these tracks so this track and this track and this track so we want to get all of those people i'm going to open that again i want to see okay this one is applying pressure probably the artist's name and yeah let me just click open this one this one is also applying pressure anyway that's what we want to do we want to print out the names of those artists so how are we going to do that i'm just going to remove that now we have to think about how we're going to do that we're going to have to understand how this object is structured right so i'm going to say data okay i'm going to console log data dot and we're going to see what is inside this object when i say data dot tracks what happens because when i open that this is what i see okay so let me just say uh, apparently and then i search okay sorry i clicked that twice that's why we're getting two results so i'm getting an array here of hits for some reason okay but i clicked on tracks instead of hits but anyway let's just see what the issue was there Oh yeah, so I clicked on tracks. So we got the object, which is data. So this whole thing is data. And then we get two properties in there. One of them is artists and the other one is tracks. Now this is a weirdly structured data because the artist names you're supposed to get on this object and this artist thing, right? But here we don't really get that data. If you were paying attention, it's supposed to be here on name here. So that is kind of okay. We are getting, it is there on names. It is on name. I was just not looking correctly. It is on name, apparently contagious. So this isn't verified. Okay, never mind that. Just want to open all of these just to see what we're gonna get. So apparently modest. So all the music that has apparently in it, we're gonna get all that music. Doesn't necessarily has have to be the name of the song, but Really, that's what we actually want. We want to search by the name for somebody. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, we're going to go back there to the code and say data dot tracks. Okay, no. We're going to say data dot artists. And we're going to say data dot artists dot name. Yeah. I want to see what we're going to get um which song which song mm. all time low now we get undefined here we get undefined for some reason let's just remove that let's remove that name i want to see what's going on here i will refresh yeah i will paste that code back i mean the name of the song and we get hits so we we get another property that we need to type right so you see it's data dot artist dot hits dot name now hopefully we're gonna get something
Nope, we don't get anything. But when I click on hits, we should get something. Okay. Right, so we get an array which has the artist. Okay, we get an array. The name of that artist is all time low. Yeah, so the name of these artists are all time low, which is super weird. Okay, right. Um, I'm just gonna search for a different song. Um, no role models. Just gonna search for that. I'm gonna search for that, and I'm getting some data back. I searched for it twice, so yeah. I was kind of panicking, but anyway, let me remove this hits and just work on the artists, right? I'm going to copy this and cut this. I'll refresh and I will paste that again. Let's wait for it. And we get an array and we get only one artist, which we all know is J. Cole, right? So um, now... Okay, let me just write something that does not, or a song that doesn't always belong to one artist. Oh, what other song has? Okay, let me say Numb. I know there's lots of songs with, with the title of Numb. Yeah, I know that. Hits, there's a total of five hits. Now, in Hits, it returns an array. Now, Hits is an array, right? So we have to treat this data.artist as an array. Okay, this data.artist is an object. And hits, which is the sub property of that, is an array. Let's just type that again. Num. That is an array, right? So now we're going to treat this data. It's an array of objects. Now we're getting somewhere. Now each of these has artists. Now each of these is an is, is, is an artist object and we can we can get access to the names of each of those people, right? But we're gonna do that on the next tutorial. On this tutorial, we're just kind of getting started on seeing the data and understanding how this whole thing works. Later on, we're gonna see how we can get each name from this array of objects. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. It'll be dropping right after this one.